Hey guys, welcome back. So, Noble Team are without a doubt Halo's fan favourite fire team, and although Reach didn't exactly delve into what backstory they have, there's definitely some out there that was released in like blog posts and legendary edition material. So today we're going to dive into all of that juicy stuff and take a look at the definitive backstory of Noble Team. So first, let's take a look at the history of the team itself, Noble. Noble was comprised of Spartan 3s and one Spartan 2, handpicked from various companies by Kurt051 and Franklin Mendez, likely chosen for their special traits and abilities. Now, although Spartans fall under the Navy branch within the UNSC normally, Noble Team were under command of Special Warfare Group 3, a sect of the UNSC Army Special Forces, and as of 2552, were under command of Colonel Urban Holland. Prior to Reach, the, the game, the team were made up mostly of different unnamed Spartans. The team were highly skilled and were known to achieve the impossible on numerous occasions. However, this didn't come without a cost. As of Reach, the only two surviving members of the original handpicked Noble team were Carter, Noble 1, and Cat, Noble 2, which is why they seem to have mostly the best relationship within the game. They'd witnessed numerous team members die in the line of duty, only to be replaced not long after, so you can imagine the toll that that would take on their relationship and their characters. The only missions we have any information about, really, about their backstory, are the ones that they took part in after falling under Colonel Holland's command, likely due to only black tape. Now, the main priorities were assisting the UNSC Army operations, and on the 22nd of April 2552, all but one of Noble Team that we know of took part in the Battle of Fumirol, where they were tasked with destroying a CCS cruiser stationed above the capital city of the planet. Although Noble were definitely successful, this battle was where Cat lost her arm, and also the previous Noble 6, Tom A293, died, sacrificing himself to nuke the cruiser to complete the mission. During the Battle of Reach specifically, every victory definitely came with a cost. So, moving on to the Spartans, Noble 1, Carter A259. Born on the planet Biko in 2520, Carter was orphaned as a young six-year-old when the planet was attacked by the Covenant, and then subsequently classed. Before being classified as a refugee, only were alerted to his biometrics and psychological screening, deeming him to be a perfect fit for the upcoming Spartan 3 program, and he was subsequently admitted into the program. During his training as a part of Alpha Company on Onyx, his unique leadership abilities were exposed, and Kurt and Mendez deemed him to be way too valuable to be sent on the usual Spartan suicide missions and never return. With this in mind, he was instantly put in command of a specialised fire team, comprised of Spartans from Alpha Company after his graduation in 2536. This team was later transferred under the unified Ground Command's control so they could support the army forces. And then, sometime later, Carter was transferred to Noble Team as its leader, and acted so until its demise in 2552. Noble 2, Cat B320. Cat was born on New Harmony in 2530 in a military family. Her father was later killed in action on Harvest, and her mother died of cancer, so she was raised by her grandmother, who was actually a retired army general. Sadly, though, her grandmother was later killed when the Covenant attacked New Harmony, and Oni jumped at the opportunity, seizing Kat and inducting her into Beta Company. Like the rest of Noble, she was highlighted for her unique skills, specifically in technology, and was marked for special assignments once her Spartan augmentations were complete, and was later removed from Beta Company by Kurt and Mendez, before being assigned to Noble Team when it was formed. As a part of Noble, she was responsible for planning the Battle of Fumarol, where her plans were to deliver a Havoc tactical nuke to the CCS cruiser stationed above the planet's capital. The mission was successful, like we said earlier, but at the cost of Cat's right arm and the then Noble 6, something that her and Carter took deep personal responsibility for. Noble 3, June A266. June, too, was born on New Harmony in 2524, and, like the others, was orphaned very young. When he was seven, Colonel James Ackerson had him conscripted into the Spartan 3 program, and June was taken to the Foreigner Shield world of Onyx, where he trained with Kurt and Mendez as part of Alpha Company. It was here that his unique sniping and scouting abilities were uncovered. In 2536, June underwent his Spartan augmentations, 
which didn't all go as planned. He was almost crippled entirely due to complications with them, but luckily went on to later recover and graduate his Spartan training perfectly fine. Following the graduation, June was under the authority of the UNSC Special Weapons within the Special Forces, where he proved to be a truly standout Spartan III within Alpha Company, and like the rest of Noble, he was picked out by Mendez and Kurt because of this. His skills with a sniper rifle led him to becoming a Spartan headhunter, working directly under Oni's orders. We really don't know much about his time with the headhunters, but what we do know is that he mostly spent time assassinating insurrectionist leaders who dared to break the ceasefire that they had with the UNSC. And then, after ultimately becoming a warrant officer, June was transferred to Noble Team, acting as Noble 3 and the team's designated scout sniper, per Carter's request. Noble 4, Emil A239. In 2523, Emil was born on Eridanus II, actually the same planet the Chief was born on, and was orphaned very young when his parents were killed by insurrectionists. He was then raised by his brother until the planet was then glassed in 2530, where he sacrificed himself to save Emil, an event that scarred him for life and played a very large role in defining that aggressive, sadistic persona. Now an orphan again, he was conscripted into the Spartan 3 program and joined Alpha Company, and it was here where his sadistic tendencies were revealed. His love of killing the Covenant seemed to fill a hole in him left by his family, and it caused him to excel in his training, and when he graduated, he was removed from Alpha by Kurt and Mendez, to be used for special missions requiring highly skilled operatives. These missions were highly classified and we know next to nothing about them, but we do know that later he then joined Noble Team, acting as Noble 4. However, there's a part of Emil's backstory that isn't exactly widely known. There was a Spartan that was very closely tied to his Noble 4 position, who was actually originally meant to be in Reach the Game, but was cut. Rosenda A344. Rosenda was also a member of Alpha Company, and after joining Special Warfare Command in 2552, Colonel Holland had her pinned as a possible replacement for Emil in Noble Team, should an operation arise involving the Insurrectionists, given that Holland would have pulled Emil out of Noble, given his special distaste and anger towards them. Noble 5, George 052. George was born in 2511 on Reach, and was abducted at 6 years old to become a Spartan 2. As with all the other Spartan 2s, he was trained on Reach by Franklin Mendez and the dumb AI, Deja. Now by dumb AI, that's by no means an insult, that's sort of the official term for that classification of AI. After undergoing his augmentations and officially becoming a Spartan 2, he was transferred from the Navy Special Weapons Branch, which was where most Spartan 2s were, to the Special Warfare Group and then assigned to Noble Team, serving as Noble 5. We don't know exactly why George was transferred to a Spartan 3 fire team, but some speculate that Dr. Halsey previously lied when she stated that three Spartan 2s had been killed and one heavily wounded in battle as a way to sort of hide George's reassignment. Now, I'm not particularly sure why she'd need to hide it. Maybe it was politics, maybe it was to break the rules of the UNSC. I'm not particularly sure, and I don't think anybody is, but it's all we know for now. Noble 6, Tom A293. Now, that might sound pretty unfamiliar to most people, so Tom was the original Noble 6, and sadly, very little is known about his life. Like many other Spartans, he was orphaned thanks to the Covenant, and later became a Spartan 3 as a result. He trained on Onyx with Alpha Company, and like June, he was picked out by Mendez and Kurt for his exceptional abilities. He later joined Noble Team and sacrificed his life during the Battle of Fumarol in 2552. He destroyed a CCS battlecruiser with a nuke, but the time on the nuke had ticked down way too far for him to be able to escape, so he went down with the ship, completing the mission. A few months later, he was replaced by Spartan B312, a hyper-lethal elite Spartan with a history covered in only black tape. B312 showed extreme promise from an early age, and was picked out of Beta Company by Kurt and Mendez, before becoming a Black Ops assassin under the orders of only themselves. He garnered a reputation for being a lone wolf assassin, responsible for making entire terrorist and rebel organisations single-handedly disappear. Due to his involvement with the highly classified Sabre program, 
Colonel Holland approved him as a replacement for Tom, and he later joined the Noble Team as Noble Six, despite his previous superior being reluctant to let him go, calling him his own private Grim Reaper. So that's all we know about Noble Six, and that's also all we know for now about Noble Team, all of the members of it that we know of before and during Reach. These are some characters that seriously, seriously need some more development because what we have shows extreme hope and personally I really, really like the characters in Noble Team. It's just they don't have much behind them. They need more information and more backstory. So, I don't know, a comic or a novel or an animated short or hell, a Noble Team game or spin-off would be fantastic. Just something to develop these characters more because what's there is promising but that's the problem. There's really not much there. So that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.